Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. This is, um, I'm gonna call this guerrilla teaching. This is um, kind of an emergency situation with um, uh, schools going online. Our department, Global Launch, has, has taken all of our classes um, online. And so I have about 14 minutes before my uh, first class of the day, my first synchronous class. And so I wanna, I wanna uh, put out this message for teachers um, in the department. Uh, this is a, a very quick demonstration about how to open up a Google document or create a Google document for every one of your students to use um, in class as the daily journal, the one uh, document that they place all written assignments. Um, and more specifically, I'm going to talk about how to um, have students in a synchronous remote classroom open up their documents and you are able to watch them and their progress to verify they don't cut and paste big swaths of information. So let's move quickly. Um, here are the video objectives. Basically, I'm going to teach you how to create um, a new folder in your uh, in your Google Drive for your specific classroom, and have um, uh, and then create a Google document for each student. I'm going to delete or at least omit in this video one part of it, which is actually actually adding the students' names because I want to protect their anonymity for research purposes. And so that is one step that might take you about 10 minutes, but otherwise. Um, after you get this, these Google documents open and created for students, they could use them on a daily basis. They could sit in class and um, I use this in the on-ground uh, formats as well. So you're going to create Google documents. We're going to go into, a, uh, into your Google, doc, Google folder, um, Google Drive, create a new folder for your class. You're going to create one new document and then copy that one document. It's a little bit labor intensive. Uh, the reason why I'm not going with uh, Google Classroom is primarily because uh, one document is created for all students and then they have to submit it into a folder. I like to create it. Instead of cooking with a microwave, I'm cooking from scratch here. Another thing is I like Google uh, Classroom. However, we are using Canvas at, at Global Launch and so I don't really want to use another um, learning management system. I want to use Google, um, uh, utilize the Google folder that I'm going to create. And then you're going to create a master. This seems like a lot of steps right now, um, but I'm going to show you hopefully within the next 12 minutes before my class actually starts. Um, and then we're going to use Zoom with breakout rooms, putting each student individually in their own breakout room so that they could type um, on their Google document that you have open on your desktop so you could see their cursor blinking and the, the, each character being typed in. So I am going to go right into... Um, I'll show you. I'm going to go right into my drive. Um, I'm going to go into the most important documents that I have. I'm, I'm going to put a period into the left of the folder so that that populates first. You can put a zero as well. And so what I would need to do is I've already created the folder, but if I were to need to create a new folder, it would be uh, folder creation. I'll go to student, um, student assignments, let's say. And again, this is creating one document for each student for the entire session that they will use. And so they place one, their first assignment on the Google document, they type it. And then the next assignment that they have, they, they bump the old assignment down or the previous assignment. And then whatever the new assignment is, they put at the very top. So here we have student assignments. I'm going to open up a, the folder itself. I'm going to create a Google Doc. I'm going to create one of them. And I'll just say student one. I want to make it easy. And in the cases of the on-ground format, and I could probably do this with the online as well, is that I will create, um, let's say, 12 new documents for um, each student, and then I will have them actually sign, or I will share that Google folder with them, um, and then they could claim it. They will, I will ask them to actually uh, add their email address to the share so that they, they onboard with the process of sharing the document. But in this case, with the going remote, um, in the time frame, I'm just going to uh, create it for each student. So I've got student one, let's say. So then I've created this document. It's automatically saved in Google. And then I'm going to go back to my Google folder. To, it's not there, so I have to press refresh at the top left of the screen. And then as you see, it will populate. The Internet's a little slow because a lot of people are using it right now as everyone has gone online, um, uh, lamentably. Uh, but positively, we're, uh, uh, a lot of us are learning a new job skill. Um, we're learning things online that we could actually transfer to on-ground if we really want to, and, and this is great for hybrid development. Um, and if you're into CMOOCs, that's something that I might be lecturing on in the future. I don't think I'm going to get into that right now, but here I am. I've got a document. 
a brand new document. I'm going to make a copy of it. I can't just make a bunch of copies for some reason. Um, I would like to be able to say copy nine times. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift button down and then copy these two. And then I'm going to end up with um, exponentially more, at least double the number. As you see, it's copying the two files at the bottom. And so let's say that I only have four students. Um, and what I will do is I will go into rename the, rename the document for whatever the student's name is. And then what I will also do or further as I will go into this, the students, the one specific student, um, I've got a duplicate here. So I've got two student ones, right? So I could go in and change that. So as soon as it re it loads, I'm going to press it two because I want to, there was already a student one, right? I want to differentiate. Um, and in the cases where, uh, let's say I could just keep student one, student two, and then share with the student. I'm going to go ahead and share. And this is the part that I'm going to leave out. Um, I have to do this before my specific listening and speaking class. I've got a um, business class coming up next. I'm going to go into an advanced. And then as you say, it's only private. It's private to me. I Only I am able to access it. So I'm going to change that. Um, I do want access um, open access in case students log in with another account. I want them, I want multiple doors open to them instead of just one door that they have to go through. Here's something important. You have to change it to the can edit. And I'm going to save it. Now I could assign this specific Google document to that student and that student will use this for the entire semester or the entire session. They their, their first assignment goes right here. And then uh, the next day, the second assignment goes on the top. And in a future, um, in a future lecture or future uh, guerrilla teacher training, let's say emergency teacher training for remote teachers, I'll teach you uh, more about how to give uh, more advanced feedback to students as well using uh, features on Google. Okay, so right now I have student one and student two that is open or uh, that are open, right? So let's imagine that I've got. Um, my entire folder of students, all right? And students already have it shared with them. They could go to their shared folder or they could put it in their own folder for their class, but they have access to this. They have open access to this. So now when I'm in class and I want, and, I'm, and I have my Zoom meeting open, I'm gonna go into breakout rooms and breakout rooms are usually designed for, um, you know, uh, collaborative work. But in this case, they're collab you and the student are collaborating, let's say, in a sense that you are passively watching and if the student is not um, engaged in uh, in the activity, you could say, listen, your cursor hasn't uh, moved at all for the past three minutes and then they will be more prompted to uh, get working. It's a little bit of B.F. Skinner's operant conditioning paradigm where they are, let's say, quote unquote, called out um, or identified as being uh, lazy, indolent, slacker-like um, for whatever reason. Let's say, uh, let's give the student the benefit of the doubt. They're just, they're, they've got multiple windows open and they're looking at something else. Um, so anyways, uh, let's say I've got 10 students in the class or whatever the number is. I could create the rooms where there are, uh, there's one student in every room. So then they have their, their video on. Um, you could see them typing in front of their camera. Uh, or in front of their computer and you could see their cursor moving with their words that they're typing. So we have a pretty decent way um, of identifying. I've used it before. You know, the students who love to, to write and type and, and uh, engage this way, um, it, it's very productive for students who have to get over that that impediment of, let's say, a lack of academic and professional discipline where they um, are more likely to kind of take the easy route and maybe not do uh, as much as others um, in the class. This is a great way to make sure that they're on task. So with that, that was a nine minute video. I'm sorry it was so long, but it, there are a lot of steps in order to add students um, email addresses. You're going to have to go into your, I believe it's PeopleSoft in order to get those email addresses, copy and paste them, and then share them with the students and you can move on with your day. Um, again, it's a one document for the entire semester. Um, and uh, you can see students' progress as well. So uh, thank you so much for uh, participating um, in this remote classroom, uh, guerrilla style teaching, let's say, remote. Um, spring B, 2000. 20.